One of the things I thought would be very useful is that uh, if you could talk a little bit about some of the people uh, whom I have described as bridge leaders um, at uh, universities where you've had uh, uh, leadership roles uh, and sort of give a sense about what made those people sort of stand out in a way that's quite different from the majority of people, particularly faculty types. Well, Clarence, I, I, um, I can think of a number of people who uh, fit the category of bridge leaders as, as you have described them, um, many of them on faculty. Uh, also, uh, trustees mm -hmm. with, with whom I've worked uh, who uh, uh, demonstrated uh, um, confidence in, in my leadership and, uh, and, and supported me through some difficult times as uh, we haven't talked about the experience that I had at Maryland uh, um, when Lynn Bias died in uh, 1986 when uh, the university was being bombarded from all corners and uh, uh, I had uh, uh, some faculty and administrative leaders who uh, who came to my aid, and uh, some very key trustees who came to my came to my aid, um, um, and made it possible for for us to guide the institution through that very very difficult difficult period. Mm -hmm. And these were people just like the the, uh, the members of the faculty and the board at uh, at Occidental. Um, these are people who, in my opinion, were able to see beyond the confines of race uh, and who were able to, to, uh, to uh, recognize that, that, that uh, there are, are uh, considerations that transcend uh, race and ethnicity and cultural differences. Um, that make it possible for people to uh, work together effectively mm -hmm. and to uh, do good things, do big things. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and throughout my, throughout my career, uh, I have uh, uh, looked for such people and have been fortunate enough to have either found them or to be found by them mm -hmm. um, and to, uh, to make it possible to, to accomplish uh, uh, some things that I've wanted that I've wanted to do, and that's that's been the huge difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you uh, look at the um, numerous very important positions you've held uh, over the years. Um, what, what are the things that you're most proud of uh, or you feel extremely good about in terms of, uh, of the things you've been able to accomplish? You know, that's a very good question. I, you know, I, I, um, I sometimes say that there's a, I wonder when I, I cross a line by, from being a young man with Great potential to a person who had a long and distinguished career. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's. Uh, I, uh, I have to laugh sometimes when, when, uh, when, I, when I'm introduced that way. It, uh, I guess you know there, there are a couple of things that that, that stand out in my, in, uh, in my memory of things that I'm, I'm proudest of. Uh, um, to have the opportunity to to lead a large um, Southern University that uh, would not have admitted me uh, because of my color when I graduated from high school, and to change it uh, when when I was inaugurated my inauguration speech I said that what I want to do at Maryland is to create a multiracial multicultural multi-generational community mm -hmm. uh, that 
brought some gasps from some people in the That's audience. Good. But I'm proud today that the University of Maryland describes itself as the diversity university. <laughs> um, and uh, so that, that's certainly something that I'm, I, f I feel very good about. And to have been at the helm at the time when Occidental um, changed from an institution that ap apologized for being in Los Angeles to being proud of being the Liberal Arts College of Los Angeles, um, recognizing that Los Angeles is truly um, the place where, where uh, um, major demographic shifts are occurring, um, where, where uh, we no longer, where the institution no longer could pretend it was not located in the heart of a huge Latino community, um, and to to uh, see it transformed into um, a, a college uh, that embraced that rather than rejected it is something that, uh, for me, um, is most meaningful. And um, I think of all the things that I've done in the 11 years that I had the honor of serving as president of that institution stands out uh, uh, as being the, the most satisfying. Mm -hmm. Those are great. One final question I want to ask, and that is, um, is there a message that you think is um, a message that you could give to um, colleges and universities, particularly predominantly non-minority colleges and universities, regarding the future relative to diversifying their faculty? Is there any sort of, from your broad experiences, uh, that you could give to, give a message to colleges and universities, to your thinking in terms of, of what's down the road and what we need to really do to make a difference in terms of diversifying our faculty? Well, there's some, there are compelling reasons in my mind for uh, um, increasing the diversification of college and university faculties. Um, certainly, the the um, the demographics uh, uh, suggest that um, you know while today. Uh, African Americans, Latinos uh, constitute roughly 30 percent of college uh, age population. Is going to be 40 percent in another 10 years, um, um, and so our campuses are going to be uh, more racially diverse, at least from a student perspective. Um, I believe strongly that that uh, student success. And particularly minority student success will be enhanced if those students are, are, are have a likelihood of walking into a classroom with a person who looks like them, maybe standing at the front, uh, um, and that's something that uh, that's an experience I never had as a college student. Um, I believe uh, a message that. Uh, Many predominantly white institutions don't understand is that that white students probably benefit even more from the presence of an African American or a Latino faculty member because uh, very few of them have, uh, in their short lifetimes, uh, encountered uh, a person of color who is in a position of leadership and authority. 
um, and it's and it's good for them because the world is be, is uh, uh, the world is a much more multicultural, interdependent one today than it was uh, uh, 30 years ago. Um, and so, my message to colleges and universities is that they need to get real about this, and they need to recognize that uh, that uh, the world has evolved to the point uh, where. Um, uh, different cultures and different races and different ethnicities must uh, learn to communicate with one another much more effectively and learn to bridge those gaps that have separated us for, for so long um, and that, that we're not going back, um, that this evolution is going to continue and that uh, if in fact the world is to be improved, colleges and universities have to lead the way.